Hello and welcome to another Three with Pete, where we're in three minutes or so, we're going to give you some tips that help you inspire, improve, and sustain your practice as educators. I want to welcome you, and as always, we're brought to you by NPT Education. Check out our website at www.npteducation.com. Follow us on Twitter or subscribe to our YouTube channel, both at NPT Education. Today, I want to talk to you about a great book that I just finished, and I'm really excited about what I learned from it. The book comes from uh, author Amanda Ripley, in 2013, published a fabulous book called The Smartest Kids in the World and How They Got That Way. Amanda Ripley is a writer for Time and the Atlantic, and in this book, she set out across the world and examined some of the top education systems globally and compared them with how we do things here in the U.S. She went to South Korea, she went to Finland, she went to Poland. And she looked at schools and uh, countries and education systems across the across the world that scored really high on the PISA exam. PISA is the Program for International Student Assessment. She even took the exam and found that the exam is one that measures not just what you know, but how you apply what you know. And we know that that's a really important piece for our students in a modern world and in a modern uh, business and professional environment going forward. And she found a lot of interesting things about the parents in those systems, about students in those systems, about educators and educational leaders in those systems, and referenced them against how we do things in America. And it was a really wonderful read, and I suggest you take a look at it. I want to summarize a couple of points for you. And those points are for parents, for educators, and for students as well. So first, a couple of parents. Uh, Amanda found that there were four different kind of parents globally, no matter what the kind of education system or what the country was in the world. And one of those kinds of parents, which I would argue is a great educational model too, really matched up well for students that achieved high things academically. The first is an authoritarian, pardon me, kind of parent, demanding, um, unresponsive, you do things because I say so sort of parent. We know as educators that doesn't work so well over long periods of times for our kids. She found permissive parents, parents that just said, sure, do anything you want, um, undemanding, but still responsive. She found neglectful parents in every country of the world, undemanding, unresponsive, could not care less kinds of parents, really sad, but she saw that everywhere across the world. She found some great parents too, authoritative parents, authoritative, both demanding and responsive, parents that could find balance. And when I thought this and read this, I thought to myself, this applies to education too. Parents who are warm, who are responsive, who give kids freedom to fail, freedom to explore, freedom to make their own choices, but at the same time have some very clear limits. She calls them bright limits, non-negotiable rules. Um, These are the non-negotiables But outside of that, I want you to try to do your own thing and try to solve problems for yourselves. She saw great success with parents that took this kind of approach. And I'd offer for educators, I suggest you take a look at that for yourselves. She also found that parents that read to kids or as they got older, read in front of or with their kids and asked questions and talked about what they were reading. Those parents tend to do uh, have their students do significantly better globally for sure. And we know that that's valuable and true here in America. She says that there's great schools across our world and in all kinds of countries. And one of the commonalities she found in world-class schools were some things that you could ask school leaders. How do you choose your teachers? Do you make them teach? Educational leaders, if you're not having teachers teach lessons in their interview, what are you doing? What are you doing? And she found that in successful schools across the world, that was a key component of the interview process was having teachers teach. Um, how, do, how do educators make their teachers better? Leaders, what are you doing for your teachers to help push and inspire and continue to help them grow? How do you measure success in your school? If it's by the football team's record, it's a great thing, but not necessarily the mark of a world-class school. So asking key questions to school leaders and to educators about how they measure success can give you some great insight into what's happening academically. And do the same thing for teachers. How do teachers, how are you measuring success in your classroom? What does that look like? There's a lot of insight to be found there. Finally, as you speak to kids in any school, ask them three questions. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? And if you don't understand, what do you do? What are you doing? Why are you doing it? And if you don't understand, what do you do? You should be able to walk into any world-class school, ask any kid those three questions, and they should be able to give you an answer. If they struggle with the why, or they struggle with the where to go to help, you know there's room for growth there. The book is 
the, the Smartest Kids in the World and How They Got That Way. It's a 2013 book by Amanda Ripley. Check it out. There's some great takeaways for parents. The recap, to summarize, we want to be authoritative parents. We want to have clear limits, and we want to make sure that our kids have freedom to explore and to fail. We want to do that as teachers, too. School leaders, you want to have teachers teach lessons when you interview them. You want to encourage and help teachers be better, and you want to measure success really clearly. And we want to ask our kids, what are you doing in a classroom? Why are you doing it? And where do you go? And what do you do if you need help? If your schools can answer those questions clearly and honestly, you've got some great world-class education happening. I want to thank you for tuning into this episode of Three with Pete. I want to invite you to check out that book by Amanda Ripley, The Smartest Kids in the World and the Way They Got That Way. It's an older book, but a great read with some wonderful insights. And as always, I want to thank you for working in education and encourage you to check us out at NPT Education. Have a great week, everybody.